In this episode, we are going to take a look at the G.I. Joe classified airborne figure. So, stick around. Dorks and Dorkettes, and welcome to It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. My name is Rob, and in this episode, we will be taking a look at the G.I. Joe classified airborne figure. Now, the original airborne figure, when it came out, and I feel like I say this an awful lot, was a special figure to me. It was one of the first, it was practically the first one that I was able to pick out on my own with some birthday money and yeah I just he ushered in a new era of G.I. Joe for me because he did not have the olive drab uniforms that I was used to so yeah it's a special figure to me and I'm really excited to take a look at the classified version of him so without further ado let's head over here and take a look at him Okay, here we go. This is Franklin Airborne Tall Tree. First thing that I noticed when I took him out of the packaging was his skin tone is so on point for his Native American origins. So, very happy about that. So, let's look at the accessories he comes with. We have his backpack with a trench shovel. We have a submachine gun, which is nothing like his original figure, but we'll talk about that later. We have a pistol, we have a knife. We have night vision array that fits onto his helmet. We have this padded goggle, and we have a normal goggle. So, I mean, he comes with pretty good gear, so let's gear him up a little bit. Take him off the stand. And by the way, the stand doesn't come with him. That came with the retro figures. But they need to sell the stands. And they need to sell accessory packs like they used to back in the day. So first things first, let's put his pistol in its holster. And it looks like... This should have come with a silencer because some of the other figures that have this, a silencer will fit into that area on the holster. Let me just double check the plastic here. Nope, he didn't come with a silencer, so that's interesting. We'll put his knife there. And let's take a look at his helmet. Fits pretty good. Put the night vision array on, even though that's not how I will display him. It's kind of a pain. There we go. Oh. God, I just noticed how dirty my nails are. Sorry about that, folks. And we have his normal goggles. I love the shininess of the paint job. That looks pretty cool. But I'm going OG. We're going to put the padded ones up here. Somehow. He has a lot of detailing on his helmet. There we go. Now, like I was saying, this is like beachhead style submachine gun. And I wish he would have come with a bayoneted 
rifle like the Crimson Guards did. And that's why they need to release weapons packs. So we have choices like that. Now, I'm going to have to see if I have an extra silencer or something laying around to stick in this holster because that's going to bug me. Oh, sorry. Gave my little secret away to how I had the backpack standing up. I mean, it's a very nice figure. Great detailing. I like the combat webbing. His color is pretty on point. I mean, we'll take a look at the original figure here in a moment. Got the grenade there. Too bad the shovel doesn't come out. That would be a neat little feature. Don't need those. So let's get out his original figure and compare it to the new one. Sorry, he was off camera. Okay, be right back. Okay, here we have the classified Airborne next to his original 1983 counterpart. And I mean, the details that just jump out at me at first are, you know, the blue vest, check. Now, I was always a fan of this like 80s blue. I don't even know a better way to describe it. G.I. Joe blue. 80s blue. I don't know. But I'm a big fan of this shade of it. I really like that. We also have the shoulder symbol here and it also appears here. His knee pads. I think his gun is blocking it, but he even has the details of the combat webbing here. Pistol, check. Now let's take a look at his backpack. Shovel, shovel. I mean, pretty cool. His helmet, as we can see, has those goggles there. And there we have them there. Whoop. I mean, everything down to, there's a grenade right here, grenade right here, knife, knife. I mean, the only thing that I feel like they fouled up on was his gun. Like I said, if they would have included the Crimson Guards bayoneted like M16, it would have fit so much perfectly, I mean, with the original. But he pretty much just has Beachhead's gun, and I'll probably give it to Beachhead and try to find something else for Airborne here. But there we go. It's a pretty nice figure. And like I said, the only minus I would give is the rifle that he came with or submachine gun that he came with. Other than that, it's an awesome figure. So anyway, back to me to finish this up. Okay, back to me. Okay. The only thing I dislike about that figure is the gun. I said that a couple times in the actual video, and I'm saying it again now. I gave him Grunt's M16 as a temporary fix until I can 3D print one with a bayonet. Um, I mean, Grunt's using the normal OG G.I. Joe laser rifle, so I'm happy about that. So, he can go without his M16 for right now. But, other than that, it is a great recreation of the original 1983 figure. And, I love that they have gotten away from the whole super high-tech side of the toy line like when it first came out, where they all had little electric bobbles and crap on them and weird, you know, high-tech laser weaponry. Which, I mean, it still fits the G.I. Joe universe, but 
that's not what us fans wanted. We wanted just, you know, more modern interpretations of those original figures that we loved. But anyway, great figure. I highly recommend it. It's sort of new on the market. I've had it for a little while, and just with my break in filming, I just hadn't had a chance to look at them yet. Opened up a couple other ones, which I will have to review at a later date. But, <laughs> for now, we looked at Airborne, and it gets my seal of approval. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I love getting back to everyone. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the other episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you'll be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thank you so much. Keep being rad and stay dorky.